I believe, if the internet is correct, that was how I would say aloha. And aloha, champions, and welcome to your third STEM challenge of the school year. For this challenge, thinking about all that we have learned about energy, waves, codes, and signals, we're going to put this all together into one culminating project. For this project, what you are going to be doing is you are going to be devising a secret code, a message of at least one sentence in length, in a code that you came up with yourself or studied about by reading about different codes that Mr. Chambers has posted in this assignment. With your code, you are going to deliver a message, a message to the class. And the class has to try to interpret what you mean by your code. Now your code could be sent electronically, like most codes are nowadays, of how we communicate in class in this distance learning. It involves light energy, maybe sound energy, Maybe you want to hold up some big flags and wave to people to come up with some kind of messaging code to communicate to others. But what you're going to do is either drawing a picture, typing it out, or making a video. You need to deliver a code to the class that we as a class will try to interpret. Okay? Now, Mr. Chambers, he really likes doing codes, but he's not going to have a chance to do codes before you will. So what you are going to do is you are going to reply to comments on other people's codes and try to solve what their codes are beforehand. Codes could be a myriad of things. Often I see that we use codes by using emojis to convey messages. I see that we use color coordination to say that, oh, I'm wearing yellow today because it's best friend's day and me and my best friend, we both chose to wear yellow today. A code or a symbol is anything that isn't obvious right off the bat. And you want to have this message hidden, okay? Because what we're doing is Mr. Chambers is going through and seeing who gets the most amount of correct guesses on other people's codes. So 24 scholars, 24 codes, you can crack all 24 of them or you can crack one or two. But you as a scholar, need to come up with at least one coded message and you need to respond to at least one other coded message. Try to decipher what that code means, okay? So take your time. Think, okay, am I making a code with a bunch of pictures? Am I rearranging the alphabet anyway? Am I using numbers like in binary? How can I make a code that other people may not be able to solve? However, you don't want it to be unbreakable, so you do have to come up with some kind of key, some way so that other people can identify what you meant through your message. Then what you are going to do is once you've submitted your code and your key so that people can see it, what we are going to be doing is pick somebody else's and try to decipher what they mean with their code. And code could be as long as you want for whatever message you want to give to the class. OK, 
Okay, now I know in this first five, six minute video, it seems a little vague. It seems like, Mr. Chambers, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, you as a scientist, remember that the rule number one of being a good scientist is to read through the directions. So beyond this video explaining what we're doing, you're going to have four or five articles down below in Google Classroom. Might be shorter articles, might be a little longer. And there are different forms of code that you could use. You can use any of those, or if you wanna come up with your own language, your own code, by all means, I look forward to it. The scholar who has the most amount of correct answers of deciphering other people's codes will get a prize on Monday. The scholar whose code is the most indecipherable, but still accurate, will also get a prize on Monday. Virtual, but that's how we do it here at Pydea. So think about what kind of message do you wanna to give to people? What kind of code do you wanna send? And have fun trying to solve other people's mysteries. Take care, and I will see you real soon.